In this case, you're going to see what's probably the most unique application of dyad flow, one that certainly didn't occur to me when I first got my hands on the product, and that is its ability to be used as a porcelain repair material. So as you can see here, we've got a couple of crowns that I placed a couple of years ago, and the crown on tooth number nine has chipped. The mesial incisal angle has fractured, some of the porcelains come off, and this is always a tricky one, isn't it? Should we replace the crown? Should we repair the crown? This was only about two years ago, and I felt like I owed the patient a repair attempt to try to do that first before we replaced it. But I've never felt great about placing composite on porcelain, but that's changed now with the introduction of dyad flow. So I roughened up the porcelain with a medium grit diamond burr, and then we're going to place the dyad flow directly onto the ceramic material. And we're using a paintbrush to thin the material and smear it and just agitate it for about 15 or 20 seconds into the ceramic surface. So let's step back for a moment and think about what we're not doing here. You'll notice there's no need for hydrofluoric etch anymore. I know we all get a little nervous when we use it intraorally. Uh, God forbid we get some on the soft tissue or we get it on the patient's tongue. Or if the patient swallows it, even when your assistant is rinsing it off, you're kind of holding your breath, hoping the hydrofluoric acid doesn't go anywhere it's not supposed to go. You know, we know phosphoric acid is relatively safe in the mouth and we can use it to etch enamel, but hydrofluoric acid is dangerous. And if it can etch porcelain material, you can imagine what it can do to your patient's soft tissue. The fact that dyad flow bonds directly to the porcelain without having to use hydrofluoric acid etch and without having to use a silane primer is a huge step forward. And one that frankly, I was a little skeptical about in the beginning, but I've been proven wrong since I've used this material to repair ceramic surfaces such as this one. So with the first application of the dyad flow, we use the enclosed paintbrush to smear it over the ceramic surface that I roughened up with that burr. And again, we just kind of agitate it for about 15 or 20 seconds. And then once we add any increments beyond that, you'll notice we don't have to use the paintbrush to agitate it anymore. You can just go ahead and go straight to the 20 second cure. Again, a 20 second light cure is more than sufficient for a shade A2 material such as this one. And if you're going to use a darker material such as the A3.5 or the universal opaque shade, you're gonna to wanna to cure that for 40 seconds. You can uh, imagine, for example, uh, a time when you might need the universal opaque. So imagine a patient who's got a 10 unit PFM bridge on the upper and then they break the porcelain off, say one of the abutment teeth, say tooth number four. And it's usually in the gingival third where they will lose that ceramic material and the metal framework will be exposed. And that's always a problem to go in and try to fix that. And again, that's one of the neat things about the dyad flow is that it will bond to the metal framework and bond to the porcelain just as well without any hydrofluoric acid and without any silane. So when you're repairing a PFM bridge like that, you're just gonna roughen up the ceramic material with a diamond burr. You're gonna roughen up the metal, either with sandblasting or with a diamond burr. And then you're gonna place the dyad flow directly onto the metal and directly onto the porcelain. Now we don't want the metal framework from the PFM bridge to show through the dyad flow, of course. So that would be a situation where we would use the universal opaque shade on top of the metal and then cure that for 40 seconds. And then on top of that universal opaque and on top of the adjacent porcelain material we roughened up, we'll use whatever shade matches, uh, A2 for example, and then cure that for 20 seconds. But of course on the tooth that I'm working on here, we're just repairing an all ceramic crown that's got that chip on the mesial incisal. And it wasn't a huge chip, so I'm actually using the dyad flow as the final composite material as well. Now, if it were a bigger fracture and it was the entire mesial incisal corner all the way down to the zirconia coping, or if it was the whole incisal edge that was fractured, I would use a different composite, something like Herculite Ultra, and place that on top of the dyad flow. But on something small like this, and we're going to use the dyad flow not only as the liner or the bonding agent to the ceramic material, but as the final restorative material as well. And you can see we've got a matrix in there so we don't bond the two teeth together. And you can see I'm using the OptiDisc. I like these discs from Kerr because they're translucent and it's really the only disc I can think of, the only 
finishing disc that you can see through. So as you place it on the tooth, you can actually see what you're doing through the disc, and you can tell they're they're super thin as well. We go in and, and polish this so the entire repair has been done with the dyad flow. It's been bonded to the ceramic material, and then I just added another layer or two to make the entire restoration from the porcelain all the way out to the incisal edge is made from the same dyad flow. And you can see we get a nice look there with the A2 shade. I was impressed by the high bond strengths of the dyad flow to the ceramic material. And I'm also impressed that it allows us to get rid of the hydrofluoric etch and the silane. And you can see that that small mesial incisal chip has been repaired and look how nice that looks in the after photo again without any hydrofluoric acid or any silane.